Today I'm going to do a, a long overdue review of my gaming headset, which is the HyperX Cloud Alpha. Now this is actually the second headset I bought in my search for uh, the perfect gaming headset, and I've been very happy with this one. I'm going to walk you through kind of an overview of the features, and then tell you a little bit about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. So to start with, uh, this is about a hundred dollar headset, so I would say mid-range in terms of gaming headsets. The build quality definitely reflects that. So compared to a lot of other headsets, I would say this is a much higher quality build. It's a uh, leather or fake leather headband with a lot of padding, and beneath that is actually an aluminum uh, kind of frame. So it feels very solid, it feels very durable, it's held up extremely well. I've had these for about a year, and they still look brand new. On each side, uh, there is an adjustability feature that allows you to kind of pull pull it in and out to adjust for the size of your head, and the actual earmuffs pivot independently as well. So extremely comfortable. There's a lot of padding in here as well. You can wear this for hours at a time, and it's, it's very comfortable. It hasn't bothered me at all. Another nice uh, kind of quality feature about this is the packaging. So you'll feel it as soon as you kind of pick it up in the store. It's a, it's a really nice box. They did a nice job designing it. It has some like, um, tone on tone, like gloss areas on that. It makes it really pop. It is also um, used by several professional esports teams. So if it's good enough for them, I figure it is good enough for me. They also include this nice kind of like microfiber carrying bag, which is great if you ever take your headset places and you don't want it to get scratched up. It's worked very well as well. The cord itself is a like a braided headset cord, I guess. It's nice and thick. It's maybe a little on the thick side, but it seems to work really well. And on the end, there is a standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So this will plug into just about any device, any fairly new device that has this type of input. And the microphone is actually removable. So this can unplug so you can use it just to listen to music um, out and about without looking like a complete nerd with the microphone on it. It does not have a flip up mic like some of the headsets do. I haven't found that to be an issue. Um, this, is, this is flexible, it seems to hold up pretty well. The sound quality seems to be great in terms of my voice. In addition, there are inline mic controls. So there's actually a, uh, a dial to turn the volume up and down and a little toggle switch uh, or slider switch to mute and unmute yourself. More on those in a minute. So. Things that I really like about this headset are the build quality, the comfort, uh, the looks. I think it's pretty cool. I think the red, the anodized aluminum looks cool. The red stitching looks cool. Uh, it's, it's a cool looking headset for a pretty reasonable price. The sound quality is good. Um, I have no complaints about the sound quality. I can easily hear footsteps coming up and Blackout and uh, PUBG, Halo. All the games that I play, it sounds really amazing. My complaints are the things that I don't like about the headset really all center around this, um, this inline volume control. So the thing about this is it's dial and it's, uh, it's accessible on either side, which means um, depending on which way it's facing you, volume up and volume down could be reversed. So if the cord's kind of twisted around, you might be trying to turn the volume up and realize you're turning it down or vice versa. And the, the little mute, inline mute um, slider is sort of recessed, although it does have some texturing, but it's kind of hard to use. So you've really got to have a grip on this thing in order to mute it. So if you're about to sneeze, time is of the essence. Most of the time I can't get it muted in time. I pretty much just stop trying at this point because it's kind of frustrating to try to do. If you have a moment, it's fairly easy to mute, but when you're trying to do it in a hurry, it's, uh, it's just a hassle. It doesn't work very well. I am also not a fan of inline volume control in general. Because what this does is it essentially takes a signal coming out of your controller and it uses like a, I'm guessing like a potentiometer to, to reduce it. So what that's doing is it's actually reducing all of the signal coming out of your controller. So you, you don't just lose the game volume when you turn it down, but you also lose your chat volume at the same rate and any mic monitoring at the same rate as well. So if you're somebody like me that really likes the mic monitoring feature and be able to hear yourself talk so you're not screaming, once you start turning this volume down, you're turning your own voice down too. So it kind of contributes to the problem of you trying to talk louder. So what I found is generally when I use this headset, 
I use the uh, onboard Xbox controls to adjust the volume and I just keep this volume all the way up because that's where it sounds best for me. And then I just turn the volume up and down and the game chat mix up and down via the Xbox interface. And that seems to work pretty well, but it can be a hassle in the middle of the game when you're trying to lower the, uh, the game chat volume to hear footsteps or something like that. It means you've got to pull up the guide in the menu. So my solution to that, and it's a big enough problem to where I, s I sought out a solution, is to buy this um, external kind of amp that plugs into the controller. Now this one's made by Turtle Beach. It's their Elite Pro model, I believe. I'm gonna do a, re a review on this separately. Uh, but I did find that being able to control the chat balance in game at the press of a button was important enough to me that I wanted to, to get this separately. And it is one of the downsides of this particular headset. However, it's really the only downside that I can think of. This is an overall a great headset. I've been very happy with it, which is why I didn't mind spending $50 on an external adapter to make it perfect. So on the topic of surround sound, and I'm gonna make a, maybe, I'm gonna make a separate video about this, but in a nutshell, uh, for the most part, when you buy a 7.1 surround headset, you're buying what's essentially a stereo headset just like this, plus some kind of audio processor that takes the Dolby, uh, Dolby Digital like 5.1 or 7.1 surround signal and creates virtual surround sound within the headset to kind of trick you into thinking things are behind you or in front of you. There are a few headsets that actually have like five speakers inside of each cup and can do like actual, I guess, true surround sound. They are few and far between and for the most part they're overkill because virtual surround sound essentially works the same way your own ears work. You have two ears, you can still distinguish sounds coming from the back and the front if the audio engineers are doing their job. So that being said, nowadays the, uh, the signal processing is being done on the Xbox or the PlayStation as well. So with the Xbox, I know for a fact, you can turn on what's called Windows Sonic or Dolby Atmos for headphones. And that's essentially using the Xbox hardware to decode the audio signal and then convert it into virtual surround sound for your headset. Effectively turning any stereo headset into even better than 7.1 uh, surround sound headset, virtual surround sound, I should say. And the reason for that is that Windows Sonic and Dolby Atmos aren't constrained to seven channels of sound. It's 360 degrees of sound all the way around you, plus there's the support for, for, for verticality. So you can actually hear sounds above and below you as they add that support to games. So the 7.1 channel kind of sound mixers that they're selling with the headsets to turn them into effectively 7.1 uh, virtual headsets are becoming outdated uh, by comparison. So when it comes to shopping for a headset, you don't necessarily need to pay extra for one that supports surround sound because the Xbox at least supports it right out of the box with any stereo headset. So that's one of the reasons why I like this headset so much and I would recommend it because the $100 price tag doesn't go to any extra audio processing devices or hardware. It's all in the build quality of the, head, the headset itself, which is very, very high. I, I like it a lot. So in a nutshell, I would highly recommend this to anybody looking for a solid, high quality set of gaming headphones. Um, unless you're thinking you're gonna go pro and you want just that best of the best, this is absolutely gonna meet your needs. I have included a link to these as well as the, um, the external audio adapter, the Turtle Beach thing that I showed earlier in the description of this video. I'd appreciate it if you click on that, if you plan on buying these or checking them out, it helps out me and it helps out the channel. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and uh, please like, comment and subscribe this video.